on why church planning spouses need care and coaching. Uh, I was just thinking I'd love to have that bright light in my face right now so I couldn't see you. But, uh, or the disco ball, that would have been nice too. Um, okay, so I'm gonna see if this clicker works, okay? So let's see. Yes, there are exceptions to this, but in general, the most significant human factor in the sustainability of pastors and ministry is their spouse. So it was January 2006. We had recently moved to a new city. We were away from family and our community connections. We had just birthed our first baby, a little girl, and we were already pregnant with another. Not a baby, a church plant, okay? It was a crazy time of, ch of change and preparation. Ed was coming out of serving as a youth pastor and we were just beginning to see the pressures that we would be facing as lead planters and pastors. So a few months after our daughter was born and a few months into our pre-launch phase, I was, I was on this walk with her and she just began to scream. And you know that scream that scream that paralyzes you. Yeah, that was it. So I called dad and I was like, oh, can you come get us off the trail? Help me. And you know what he said? You need to figure it out. I'm in a meeting. And so then it all began. Me trying to figure it out. What I quickly realized was that I was in the crucible and that God was refining me, making me more like him each and every day. And it was hard and I was stressed, and I was alone, and I was overwhelmed, but the, at the same time excited. Excited to see lives changed and surrender to Jesus. I would venture to say that my story is a similar scenario of the early days of many young married couples, some with kids in planting a church. Having walked through two ch church plants myself, I have a burden for church planting spouses and long to see them thriving and in life and in ministry. Couples go into church planting together. They are called, assessed, and sent as a unit. But the pastoral spouse often receives little training or ongoing support. So there were some common stressors which were identified for the church planting spouse. This identifi identification resulted from extensive research through a group called Pericaleo, along with some data that I collected as I gathered and interviewed and had small conversations with a small group of church planning spouses. I will be sharing the top three with you today. There's about 11 or 12, but I will share the top three with you today. A critical stressor that was identified was a lack of a support system for the planting spouse apart from the planter. So lack of involvement of the planter, because obviously of increased pressures within the plant, increases loneliness and isolation for the spouse while placing added pressure on the marriage. In Pericaleo's study, 100% requested mentoring or some sort of a support system. Within just the small group that I interviewed, 100% acknowledged that having a mentor or a coach as a support for them would have been beneficial. Here are some of the things that they said. I can't tell you how I would have loved to have had a lifeline from a trusted friend who had been through the roller coaster of what we were experiencing, especially in our first years of planting. There was so much Oops, there was so much I was trying to process on my own and find myself dealing with it internally for the next several years, even after leaving our church plant. And I love this third one. Church planting eats your lunch in ways regular ministry doesn't. And having someone who had experienced that and who could give me guidance as I headed through the different milestones and hurdles in the process would have been invaluable. A second stressor identified was the planting spouse's struggle with identity, sense of purpose, juggling being a planting spouse, a mother or father, leading multiple ministry areas, possibly even having an, a job outside the home. Continuously asking, what is my role? The planting spouse often feels isolated and unprepared for the work of church planting. Others had this to say. There was the stress, there was the stress of the balance between the time and money demands along with the family and trying to hold each other up. We felt like failures daily. I know my biggest stress personally was my lack of self-confidence and finding my role has been a huge stress. I'm still struggling with that. A coach would have given me someone to talk to specifically around my role in the church plant as a spouse. In the third stressor that was identified was a need for spiritual formation in the planting spouse. Church planting takes you on a journey like no other. There are unique situations that are faced unlike any other, 
One spouse said it this way, I'm pretty emotionally healthy most of the time and have been all my life, but church planting made me doubt my faith, marriage, and sanity at various times. And this, uh, another spouse who I'm just, I've just come to love, wrote this for me, and I wanted to share it with you today. It's just a bit of her story. In an effort to be faithful in our calling and responsible in fulfilling the mission we had been tasked with, my mantra was no excuses. I even had a bracelet made with those words stamped on it as a daily reminder to keep pushing forward. We were in a season of ministry where I was tired and needed a little extra motivation to keep pressing on. What I failed to realize was that I was applying this mantra to every aspect of my life except for self-care and soul care. I was very productive in that season, just not in the areas of my life that truly mattered. I would have benefited from the accountability of a coach in that season saying, give your, time, your soul time to rest. It's okay to stop. I had, in the name of ministry, worked myself to a point of neglecting my own need for God to restore my soul. I was too busy helping others connect with God so that he could restore theirs. She goes on to say, and I love this, as a planting couple, the planter's spouse experiences alongside the planter all the same joy and pain, victory and fear, excitement and exhaustion of the journey. A coaching network for spouses would be a gift not only to the spouse of the church planner, but to their families and ministries as well. We can find everything that we need in a relationship with Christ, but sometimes we need someone else to remind us and to point us back in that right direction. And I'm just going to take a little bit what Wayne said. Our goal is not to reduce tension. It's, tension will be there, but to increase trust. And how could we put that into this? So what would it look like to create a coaching network within the Church Multiplication Collective where the issues of isolation and support for the church planning spouse could be addressed? Oops. Oopsie. Oh, I forgot my scripture, guys. Scripture! So plans succeed through good counsel. Just pretend like I didn't do that. Okay, so now what would it look like to create a coaching network within the Church Multiplication Collective where the issues of isolation and support for the planting spouse could be addressed? Where he or she could learn how to balance a ministry life and thrive in the role that God has created for them? Where they could be equipped for the ministry demands church planting will inevitably place on them as well as on their family? Where tools could be created that would encourage soul care in the planting spouse? What would it look like to designate a small percentage of our church planning budgets to care, coaching, and training of our church planning spouse? Now you might be thinking, what does this have to do with me? I would venture to say that some of you might be saying, I'd love to be in a coaching relationship. Others might be saying I <clears throat> that I'd love to be a coach or a mentor. Some of you may want to contribute financially. Some of you may want, want to be a part of writing and designing some spiritual formation tools that are applicable to our church planning spouses. We are engaging in coaching training towards the end of this summer and hope to have our planting spouse care and coaching network up and running in the next six months. So if this talk has made you think, there's me, that's my name, or has piqued your interest in some way, I'd love to talk to you. If you'd love to email me questions, I do not have a, a Wesleyan email, but this is me, M. Love. There she is. And you can uh, email me, talk with me, and uh, we look forward to your partnership in this. I'll leave you with one scripture, 1 Corinthians 15, 58. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do is ever useless. Thank you.